see you in a second. Good evening. We'd like to call the Board of City Council meeting to order and certainly want to welcome all of you that are here with us this evening and I uh, appreciate the fact that you took time to be here on a very special occasion as we organize the uh, City Council, as we uh, recognize those that have been elected and re-elected to the City Council, and as we pay, I'm getting ready to say homage. <laughs> 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 as we pay tribute to our, one of our long-standing colleagues, uh, Mr. A.J. Howard Clement III. Uh, if we could just take a moment of silent meditation, please. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Howard if he would uh, lead us in the pledge.
Uh, before I begin, I certainly want to recognize I saw some of our colleagues from the uh, Board of County Commissioners and the Board of Education here this evening. I saw the Vice Chair Brenda Howerton, who I understand was just uh, re-elected as chair, Vice Chair of the Durham Board of County Commissioners. I thought I saw Commissioner Wendy Jacobs, and I don't know, are any other colleagues here this evening? I'm going, I'm going, to, I'm going to the school, but I want to invite anybody else from the, uh, the Vice Chair, I saw Heidi Carter of the Durham Public School. Uh, I saw Nancy, Natalie Breyer, uh, Natalie in the back, okay. Uh, I saw Nancy Cox, is she still around? Yeah, yeah. Okay, did I miss anyone else? Uh, I saw Omega Parker, where's Omega, where's, okay. So, anyone else? All right, yeah, I, I, I'm going to get our former colleague, uh, Senator Mike Woodard, former city council person. Uh, any of your colleagues here? Okay. It's, it's, okay, Representative Michelle, Mickey Michelle, senior, longest serving in the House. And Senator Floyd McKissick coming in the door. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, I would first ask um, Michael Perry. Uh, as we begin the process, the director of the Board of Elections, uh, if you would come forward, please, and Bill Bryan. Uh, Bill, are you chair? I am chair. Yeah, great. Okay, good evening. I'll, I'll introduce myself again. I am Michael Perry, director of elections for Durham County Board of Elections, um, and with me is Mr. Bill Bryan, chairman of the Durham County Board of Elections. We will um, present the election results to the city clerk and certificates certificates of elections to the winning candidates. Good evening. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be here this evening. The Durham County Board of Elections conducted the 2013 City of Durham Municipal Elections and the results of that election have been unanimously approved and certified by the Board of Elections. The abstract of the results of the election will now be given to the City Clerk. In the 2013 City of Durham Municipal Elections, the citizens of Durham elected as mayor of the City of Durham, Mr. William V. Bell. Congratulations, Mayor Bell. The citizens of Durham elected for council seat for Ward 1, Ms. Cora Cole McFadden. Congratulations, <laughs> Councilor McFadden. The citizens of Durham elected to City Council Seat Ward 2, Mr. Eddie Davis. Congratulations, Mr. Davis. And last but not least, the citizens of Durham elected to Council Seat for Ward 3, Mr. Don Moffat. Congratulations, Mr. Moffat. Again, it was our, it's my pleasure to have been here, and congratulations to you all. Thanks, Bill. Uh, we, we have several uh, presentations to be made this evening, and I will present the first one to Holly Clement. How it is uh, coming down, I, I don't think I have to tell any of you the amount of service and time that uh, Howard Clement has given to this community, not just to the city council, but in all the civic affairs that have gone on in this community, uh, especially the important ones, how it has been somewhere a part of it. Uh, it's been my pleasure, and I'm sure the pleasure of my colleagues, to have had the opportunity to serve with Howard uh, on this city council. I, I can tell you that uh, Howard is a person that uh, whenever there's some need for levity or some need for humor, we can always depend on Howard, even if he's talking about himself, because he, 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 doesn't, he, do, he doesn't share it. And uh, Howard is a person that, as long as I've, I've known him, if, if there's to be a, wherever you want to be, Howard, 
if there's ever to be a meeting, if there's to be a meeting, uh, you can always count on Howard being there. And I, I know there are probably, if you talk about meeting, there are probably three things that Howard says. Uh, where is it? What time is it? And can I get a ride? <laughs> <laughs> And what, what I'd like to do, I'm, do I have a, 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 another microphone? Let me have the microphone. Th this is a um, sort of small token in, in a way, but it, it certainly represents uh, our feelings toward this man that we're recognizing this evening, uh, to Howard and certainly to his family and all of those that have supported him over the years and continue to support him. Uh, this year has, has been the best year for, for Howard, as, as probably most of you know, and, uh, but he's always been with us in spirit, uh, if not in presence. Uh, you don't hesitate if you want to call him. Uh, he's there to uh, be of some type of advice. Of course, he says he doesn't want to give a lot of advice, but uh, knowing Howard, he'll, he'll give it. <laughs> and so, Howard, what we'd like to do is to present this plaque, and it reads, an appreciation to Arthur John Howard Clement III for 30 years of dedicated service and commitment as council member and mayor pro tem to the city of Durham and citizens of Ward 2, presented from May 16, 1983 to December 2, 2013, and is signed by myself, William E. Bell Bell, mayor, Cole Core, McFadden, mayor pro tem, council member Eugene Brown, councilperson Diane Katati, councilperson Don Moffitt, and Councilperson Steve Shul. Steve, Steve would probably want to have something to say also, but we're going to pass Steve up this time, and we're going to give this to Howard, and Howard, if certainly, I, I, I don't know. We, we talk about great things happening in the city of Durham, and Howard has been very much a part of it uh, in every way. Uh, I remember when I first met Howard, he was, he was talking and laughing, and I'm not going to say what else he was saying, but he's <laughs> saying, saying some pretty good things along the way. Uh, always willing to give words of wisdom. And when we talk about institutional knowledge, which is very, very important as you sit on this council and you try to make decisions, at times you have to reflect back, well, why did the council do this or why did they do this? You could always call on Howard to tell them why they did it. Now, if it's a good thing, Howard would say why we did it. If it's a bad thing, it's why they did it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but knowing Howard, he, he, he always had, had good things to say about anyone, always has a pleasant smile. And I'm not going to talk about other good things he talks about. Howard and I are alumni of Howard University, and it's always been my pleasure to be able to talk to him about things back then and uh, listen to some of the things that he can tell us about. But Howard, again, we, we just appreciate your service. Uh, we know you aren't going to be far away from us. Uh, you're still here in the city, and you want to feel that this is always home for you. And certainly if we call on you, we would hope that you would honor us by giving you some words of wisdom. But again, on behalf of the Durham City Council, and the citizens of Durham, uh, it's our honor to present this to you. Now, I, 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 I know we have a couple more presentations. Is Kim Griffin, is, is he present? Kim? Kim is a former city council person and uh, has a presentation he'd like to make to, to Howard also. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Uh, Howard, this is what happens when you miss a meeting. <laughs> um, I am a realtor, for those of you that don't know, and have been for 41 years. And the Durham, uh, the Real Estate Board of Durham was formed in 1922. And we had 15 members. Today, we're known as the Durham Regional Association of Realtors, over 1,100 members and serve in Durham and surrounding counties. And our purpose is to promote professionalism, development, research, and exchange of information with members, the general public, and the government to preserve the free enterprise system and the right to own, use, and transfer real property. Um, the meeting I missed, Haywood Davis and some of the members said, if there's one person that we really need to recognize 
for his achievements. It's A.J. Howard Clement III. And I did not know what A.J. stood for until I read the agenda, but now I do. <laughs> I was elected to the city council in 1979 with the purpose of, exp of uh, extending the expressway. And at the time, the Crest Street was quite controversial uh, area that uh, needed to be addressed. And as a councilman, we addressed that, we solved the problem, and I think uh, Mayor Gully received an award from HUD several years later. The expressway is now built, the reservoir is now built. We had to create a new zone to, if y'all can believe this, redevelop Brightleaf, and to start, uh, continue what other folks had started with the redevelopment of downtown. And of course, that's, that uh, would be the Civic Center, and that was a very important vote. But I think of all the things that we did that has had the most impact has been appointing Howard to the Durham City Council. And I know that once you get elected, you go to the Institute of Government, and they tell you all the things that you can and can't do since you got elected, and they tell us what the law says. And I would submit to you that if we need a shining example of a good elected official that of high integrity, and he is a character, it would be Howard Clement. And therefore, the Durham Regional Association of Realtors would like to make a presentation and our uh, past president of the Durham and North Carolina Association of Realtors and Real North Carolina Realtor of the Year, Wendell Bullard, and our current president, Kirk, um, Wes, would you go ahead? Mr. Clement, the Durham Regional Association of Realtors Declaration of Appreciation and Recognition, the People's Councilman, in appreciation and recognition of your unselfish dedication and courageous service to the citizens of Durham as a member of the Durham City Council, Durham, North Carolina, resolved December 2013. Thank you so very much for each and every one of you. Thank you. Well, we, we all read about that 50-page speech that Howard was in the process of <laughs> preparing. Yeah, we, nah, I'm getting ready to give it to you now. <laughs> I'm getting ready to give it to you now. Uh, it's all yours. Thank you all so much, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you know I, I don't talk much, <laughs> so, so what I have to say tonight is, you know, what's, this, what's the expression, keep it, keep it brief. Sweet, no, be seated, no, be seen, be brief, and then be seated. <laughs> and I intend to adhere to that. But to, to say that 30 years, and it doesn't seem like 30 years, it's been a wonderful experience. And if I start calling names of who contributed to that kind of characterization, I'd be in a world of trouble. But since I'm not running for re-election, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and somebody just said, thank goodness. <laughs> but uh, in behalf of my family, represented here tonight by The Rock, I call Ann The Rock my wonderful wife, and other family members. I have Brian Daniels, 
my daughter's husband. My daughter couldn't be here tonight, but she sent Brian. And of course, there's, there's my sister-in-law. Any other sisters-in-law out there? But uh, I have, I think, five sisters-in-law. And uh, Claire, you, you represent all five of them. So thank you for coming. Um, I certainly want to thank our Father in heaven for having made it all possible for for me to be here tonight. Through him, all mercies and bounties flow, and I'm grateful. Secondly, I want to thank the citizens of Durham, all of you who are here tonight. Thank you so much. My colleagues on the council, and I think I counted there were, during my tenure, I think there were 49 <laughs> members of the council who served with me, and some of them are here tonight who've been with me and who've moved on to greener pastures. And uh, I want all of you to remember that Howard Clement never worked as in his behalf. He worked in behalf of the citizens of Durham. And that all of you and my colleagues on the council You're a team. And where's Eddie Davis? I know he can hardly wait till he gets that, gets to that seat. <laughs> and and uh, it won't be long, Eddie. You can wait as long as you want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, personal, profound congratulations, Eddie, for taking on the Ward 2 seat. Uh, Thank you so much. I hope I can serve this as wonderfully as you have. And I anticipate you will serve 30 years. <laughs> I'll be 100 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and to the other members of the council, thanks so much for your service and looking forward. Because uh, it, it, it doesn't seem like 30 years, I tell you. It doesn't seem like it. But then sometimes it felt like 100 years. <laughs> I certainly want to thank Hattie Johnson. Hattie, stand up. Is Evelyn here tonight? She's on. But these two ladies worked in the clerk's office and certainly was a big help to me in my capacity as a member of the city council. And Hattie, to you and Evelyn. And of course, there are other members of the staff, Ann Gray is here, Lottie, uh, Nanetta, Amos is here, Ms. Brooks is here. Of course, some of you may not even want to admit that y'all work with me, but, uh, <laughs> but these ladies did a wonderful job, and Ann and I are very grateful. Working for the city of Durham and all of the employees who are here, y'all have done beautiful really. And to Tom Bonfield, in my opinion, the best city manager Durham has ever had. <laughs> y'all keep me after I'm gone now, don't think just because I'm leaving y'all can get rid of him. <laughs> because, because he's good. He's earned, he's, he's earned the consideration that this council has given him. And thanks so much, Tom, for your service to you and Karen and family, you have our blessing. I think that's about all I need to say. I said thank you, thank you, and thank you. And may God bless you. Well done, well done, well, well done. Thank you. I see a lot of family members are here. The first, the first lady and her family, along with the mayor, are here, and they even do it a whole lot. 
And Ms. Davis, as, as you see your husband take on the role that he's decided to take on, you'll find out, you'll say, goodness, is this what you did? <laughs> all the hours of the night, all the hours of the morning. I, the best meeting I ever attended was on the four o'clock in the morning. And, uh, but, but as a result of that meeting, I had the best breakfast I've ever had. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you for allowing that to happen. May God bless all of you. And as the new season, of holiday, as the holiday season, as we go deeper into the holiday season, don't forget the reason for the season. Sometimes we forget. But it all, all happens through him, our Lord and Savior. God bless you all, and good night. I, I, I failed when I came down on the floor. I failed to recognize. I saw Nick Tennyson, former mayor, now with DOT here. Nick, thank you. Uh, we, we now will uh, go into the swearing-in part of this program. And this evening, we are, it's a pleasure to have District Court Judge Pat Evans to do the swearing-in of the Sir Civil City Council persons. And Pat, I'll follow your instructions on what we need to do. I ask uh, my wife and Emily if they can join me. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members, wonderful, wonderful citizens of Doral. It's an honor to administer the oath tonight. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Durham County District Court bench. Who will hold the Bible for you, Mayor? You, you. You would repeat after me, Mayor Bell. I, William V. Bill Bell. I, William V. Bill Bell. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge. The duties of my office the duties of my office as mayor of the city of Durham as mayor of the city of Durham so help me god so help me god congratulations Thank you. And now I will administer the rest of the oaths in the following order. Cora M. Cole McFadden, followed by Eddie Davis III and Don Moffitt. I would ask that all my children join me. All my children, so they have to. <laughs> okay, let me get up here. Hmm? You better get up here. Watch out. Watch out. Um, Moffitt, put your hold the Bible. Thank you. Now hold it. Come on. Now hold the Bible.
You were you had pushing. It's okay, I'm about to raise your right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. if you would repeat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, if you would repeat after me. I, Cora M. Cole McFadden. I, Cora M. Cole McFadden. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and Laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and Laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office. As si council member of the city of Durham. As council member of the city of Durham. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs>
a few more things that uh, we like to do before we take a break. And I'd first like to recognize the recently elected city council persons for comments. And uh, Eddie, I'll start with you. Let me put you to work. Thank you, Mayor Bell. It is a great honor for me to be able to sit on this platform and to begin my service as a member of the governance team for the city of Durham, North Carolina. I believe that my parents, Eddie Davis and Nora Shannon Davis, just finished a praise dance <laughs> as they looked down from at, upon the swearing-in ceremony a few minutes ago. I feel that they are sharing that heavenly view with my father-in-law, Walter Van Hook, and with my father-in-law, Bill Watson, and with my former Hillside High School colleague, Vernell Strayhorn, who is the mother of Jackie Strayhorn Brown. Here on earth, I want to thank my entire families for supporting my quest for this office. Throughout the campaign, my wife Harriet stood beside me as she always does. And tonight I was honored to have her standing beside me as I took the oath of office. I want to thank my grandchildren, Nicoya and Alibi, for holding their great grandfather's Bible during the oath. Thanks also go out to our son Christopher and his wife Kay, who are here in the chamber with us, and to our daughter Jessica, her husband Glenn, and their daughter Lola, who through the wonders of Skype and Time Warner Cable are able to witness this Durham, County, Durham City Council meeting from their home in Houston, Texas. Also, thanks to my sister, Delma Marie Davis Bowser, and to my mother-in-law, Gladys Watson, to my nephew, Michael Kendall Goodwin, and his wife, Tawana, and to my cousin, Nicole Davis. There are three other very special people who stood with me during the swearing in. They are Jackie Brown, my campaign manager, who represents a wide array of Durham citizens and organizations who supported me from July 5th until November 5th. Dr. John Harding Lucas, who just a few days ago received the prestigious North Carolina Award from Governor Pat McCurry. Dr. Lucas is the person most responsible for bringing me here to Durham in 1980. He represents all of my former colleagues at Hillside High School and the Durham Public Schools. And my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Terry Thomas, who, who represents the wonderful, gracious, caring, and giving congregation at the West Durham Baptist Church. I want to thank the Durham County Board of Elections and its staff, which, which is directed by Michael Perry, for the flawless and unbiased electoral work they performed for the citizens of Durham. I want to thank Dale Mattioli, Bishop Franklin Haynes, Omar Beasley, and their supporters for a spirited yet professional campaign to determine which of us would replace the tallest tree in the Durham City Council Forest. I certainly thank each of the organizations that endorsed me and all of the individuals who cast their ballots for me during the primary and general elections. However, I also respect and honor the people and the organizations who supported my opponents. Having made the transition from campaigning to governing, I want the entire community to know that I will listen, converse, interact, and serve in a manner that will show no distinction between past political allies and past political adversaries. Our democracy hinges on the right of the people 
to make their individual choices. However, our democracy also depends upon the post-election coalescing of our citizens for the benefit of one united Durham. Since November 5th, I have received an excellent orientation to city council operations from the staff members in the office of the city manager, the office of the city clerk, and the office of the city attorney. I appreciate the lessons and I hope I did not ask too many questions. <laughs> My new colleagues, the sitting city council members, also have been warm, hospitable, and welcoming. They have offered their continued assistance as I gain knowledge and experience. As I move forward in my role as a member of the council, I salute the record-breaking 30-plus year tenure that has been rendered by Mr. Clement. He has dedicated a major portion of his life to Durham and its people. I personally have not measured the width and the length of his feet, but I am certain that my very small footprint Cannot, ma cannot match the proverbial canyons that have been indelibly carved into the Durham landscape by the work, the advocacy, and the legacy of Arthur John Howard Clement III. Mr. Mayor, I want to assure you, my council colleagues and the residents of Durham, that I will work hard to represent all of the people and to be a bridge that will pass over race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, age, abilities, economic class, and geography. I pledge to be both a team player and an independent voice for the citizens of our great municipality, the city of Durham, North Carolina. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie, and we look forward to working with you as we go forward, at least for the next two years for me. I'm going to now recognize Councilman Don Moffitt. Good evening, Mayor Bell, fellow city council members, and all of the people of Durham present here and watching tonight on DD DTV8. I have to begin by thanking my beloved family, my wife, Sydney Cruz, and my daughter, Isabel Moffitt, who put up with my absence many nights and more than a few weekends and do so without complaint. They encourage me to do my best and I'm grateful. Thank you. Mr. Clement, Howard, I'm grateful for your 30 years of service on city council and for all of the years of service that you've given to Durham. You took risks and you worked hard to push and prod Durham into the 21st century. You helped bring our community together and I thank you. To all of you who supported my election, thank you as well. Your faith and trust are humbling and frankly a little scary, and I will do my best to hold up my end of the bargain. In the short time I've been on council, I have found my colleagues to be hardworking, thoughtful, and caring. Mr. Davis, while I've not had the opportunity to work closely with you yet, I enjoyed getting to know you during the election season. Mr. Mayor and members of city council, each of you have my greatest respect and I look forward with pleasure to continuing our work together. Mr. Bonfield, I appreciate the ethic of customer service, transparency, and excellence that you support so strongly. I see it throughout our city staff. It's a measure of your management ability that you have built a great team on all levels. As I look out over everyone here, I'm struck by the diversity of the city, by how many caring, intelligent, creative people make Durham home. I love Durham, and I'm happy that I have the opportunity to, conserving, to continue serving all of the people who make their homes here. Great things are happening here. We see new development projects rising and new employers coming, but we know that this new wave of prosperity isn't reaching into every part of Durham. There are parts of Durham where unemployment is high, and people are working hard just to stay afloat. My job, our job, is to continue to find ways to bring together every part of Durham, to create jobs, improve housing, and improve the transit system. 
we have to find new ways to bring all of the people together to build our beloved community out of the many colored threads that make up our city. We have challenges to address, just three of them, are addressing the issues of institutional racism, developing a budget for the next year that will require some hard choices, and creating real incentives for affordable housing. But I'm confident that we, that's the entire community, with City Council, will work together on the challenges ahead. I look forward to that work, to working with all of you over the next four years. Thank you. Thank you, Don, and it's been a pleasure to, to have had the opportunity to work with you over the past year and look forward to the next two years. Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize the Mayor Pro Tem, Cora Cole McFadden. Good evening. Uh, I am just so grateful uh, for the opportunity to serve the city where I was born, reared, educated, and shaped for community service. But first of all, let me just give honor to God for leading and guiding me along my political journey. And I thank God for all of his blessings, Pat, you know that, because without him, we would be absolutely nothing. I'm grateful to my family for uh, your love, for my daughter, beautiful daughter, Lori, who looks like I did 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> thank her for her patience and always reminded me, Mama, there is another life uh, other than city government. Having worked in city government at this point, 35 years, Howard, I, is Howard still here? I, I worked in city government 23 years, and so I've been on council 12 years. So I've given most of my life uh, to public service, and it's just a blessing uh, to be able to serve. Now, the children that you saw with me tonight are kids that I've adopted and my, as my grandchildren. I have a grand dog who lives in uh, Sherman Oaks, California, but I don't have any other uh, grandchildren. That's okay, Lori. It's okay. <laughs> but <laughs> the children were uh, Nicole, who is Ed's granddaughter, uh, Emmanuel, and you might remember Emmanuel Coleman is the kid that I made my godson during one of our city council meetings a few months ago. And London Starnes, um, who was one of my children, she's raising her hand back there, who's one of my children. And Marcus Gordon, who is also one of the children from uh, my, my church, West Durham. Uh, where is Marcus? Yeah, Marcus. Uh, from, from Western Baptist Church. I'd like to thank all of the citizens for your vote of confidence uh, in my work. I think everybody knows that I love Durham. I'm a cheerleader for Durham everywhere I go. I want to thank all of the organizations that endorsed my candidacy. Uh, you, even though I was unopposed, you really didn't have to endorse me, but you thought enough of me and my work to do so. And so it was a hard run race. <laughs> I was my own worst enemy. But I did well, Patrick, so uh, it, that's OK. Um, I would like to thank kids voting uh, for 100% of their vote. There was a kid who was 12 years old who, at our interview, said, I see you're unopposed. I'm going to take you on. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, I thank him for his mercy <laughs> because he decided he would not challenge me uh, uh, in this race. Um, having been on city council for the uh, past three terms, I've just been blessed to work with a guy who I think is one of the greatest mayors on this earth, the Honorable William B. Bill Bell. And he is the person that has really inspired me to work as hard as I have worked. Uh, think what inspires me to work also is that I know that God has blessed me, not just for me, but that I might bless others. 
And so I see the work that I do as an extension of what he has given me um, to do uh, in the city and to make it a better place for those who normally are not able to come to meetings and speak for themselves. Those who so many times we don't even think about when making decisions. Those who need us to see them as human capital that we need to invest in. We have no problems investing in buildings, streets, infrastructure, but the human infrastructure, that is what I am committed to making sure that I uplift from this day forward as I have in the past. I love Durham and I thank God for Durham and I thank God for each of you who saw fit to assemble in this place tonight. And uh, I, I will say again, and I say without a shame that I just thank God and I give him all the glory for everything that he has done through me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cora. I almost said Reverend Cora. I'm looking back. Uh, let, let me ask if my fellow council members uh, have comments. Councilman Katani. I did have remarks, particularly for Howard. Is he still here? Because I can share them privately. Okay, that's a good point. Okay, thank you. Well, first, of course, I want to congratulate all my colleagues. You've been a wonderful, wonderful team to work with, and I'm just looking forward to additional time. Um, for Howard, I had uh, wanted to thank him for his tremendous years of service and share one um, story. Uh, during Early on during my first term on council, um, Howard was a staunch ally when we tried tried to fight with the YMCA to reduce barriers for same-sex couples. And it reminded me of his great history of civil rights work and um, just really deepened my respect for him. And so I just wanted to thank him, especially for all his tremendous contributions to this community and what a pleasure it had been to serve with him for the last 10 years. So I hope, I um, just wanted to share that piece and also you know, again, congratulate all of you, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Eddie, I'm, you know, very looking forward to working with you and getting to continue to work with Dawn and everyone else. So, thank you. I recognize Councilman Shule for any comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's hard to lose somebody like Howard Clement, uh, but it's also very appropriate that somebody with, with a record of community service like Eddie Davis has risen to fill his shoes. Uh, we, we were blessed this year, I, th I believe, with very good candidates. Uh, I thought that our, our candidates were really, really good, every one, and really cared and were really committed people. And uh, democracy is, is majestic. Uh, and on a night like this, I think we all realize that. Um, and what I want to say to to Eddie in particular is, when I came on here two years ago, I didn't know exactly what it would be like, but what I would say is that I have I've felt in these two years, and I, I bet Don feels the same way, just so welcomed and, and uh, by, by my colleagues. We, we're so well led by Mayor Bell uh, and by our Mayor Pro Tem, and uh, it is a group that we, we, really, we really function well together, we work well together, and it's just been such a pleasure to be a part of that. Uh, and so I welcome you to that, Eddie, and congratulate uh, our mayor and our mayor pro tem and Don for your uh, re-elections. Steve, I recognize Councilman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I also want to say a few words about about Howard, and because uh, I'm sure he'll be watching this later. Uh, <laughs> I recall uh, 10 years ago when I was first elected that um, and I was new to the job and I really thought I knew everything but I really didn't 
know that much at all. But of course, Howard was, was sitting here, and this was the second or third meeting. I do not even recall the, the issue itself, but um, I, uh, I leaned over and said, Howard, I, I've got some uh, constituents here in the audience and watching on television at home, and they want me to speak out on this issue. And uh, I said, Howard, I, I'm actually a little nervous about it. Uh, what should I do? And he, he grabbed my arm and looked up at me with those caring, lovely eyes. And he said, I think it's better your constituents wonder why you didn't speak than why you did. <laughs> uh, you know, Howard, uh, as some of you know, changed political parties. But he never, he never turned his back on his core beliefs. But yet when he organized the, uh, the boycott of Durham businesses uh, in the 1960s, or when he would speak out for development projects that he thought were necessary for the city, or when he demanded equity in the hiring of Durham City employees. We all knew where he stood, but I guess if there's one word that to me characterizes Howard is that he was always, always first and foremost a gentleman, a gentleman. And he subscribed to the belief that's been articulated by many of us up here and especially the mayor, that when it comes to the major issues that we debate, we discuss, we dissect, we dialogue, and then we vote. But after we vote, we move on. We move on. Howard was not one to carry grudges. Last night I was reading uh, the Bully Pulpit by Doris Kearns Goodman about, of course, Teddy Roosevelt. Um, and there was a quote from Teddy after he finished his first term uh, in the General Assembly in New York where he said basically that uh, he had little use for politicians with timid souls, that what America needs are men of great and generous emotion, of high pride, stern belief, and lofty enthusiasm. But above all, we need men who can quell the storm and ride the thunder. Howard Clement was one man who could quell the storm and ride the thunder. And Durham is a much better place because of him and his leadership. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Well, as, as you can see, uh, we, you, have a very well-spoken, eloquent city council. So it doesn't leave much for me to say. Uh, I first want to thank my family, Judith, and our four children, one of which is here, Andrene, and now our four grandchildren, uh, for being there when I wasn't there, uh, for being supportive of the things that I've attempted to do. I certainly want to thank all the voters and supporters and the citizens of Durham for their support for me over the few years I've had the honor and pleasure to serve not only the Board of County Commissions, but now in this Durham City Council. In fact, I was talking to the clerk and somebody had asked me, how many mayors has Durham had? And I had to go to the clerk to get the information. Uh, Durham is 144 years old. It's had 43 mayors, 143rd mayor. And I certainly appreciate that and honor that, that position. Uh, we have a lot of challenges in our community. 
I think we've made a lot of progress. Uh, it's no question in my mind that we're up to meeting those challenges and we'll make more progress. But we'll do it as a team and we'll do it as members of this council, members of the city, and hopefully with the support of the citizens of Durham. So I again want to thank all of you of not only what you've done but continue to do to make this a great city where great things happen. And I certainly appreciate the fact that you came out tonight to be a part of this program. Uh, we're going to say uh, thank you. We're going to take a brief break. It's 8.02. We'll reconvene at 8.15. Uh, why, why, why don't we do this when we get to our regular meeting, if you don't mind? Yes, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, what is this? Oh, <laughs> that's a very important role. <laughs> That's why I've got the Mayor Pro Tem who has my back. Uh, it, it has been my honor and pleasure also to have the support, and this council has had the support, of Cora Cole McFadden to serve as the Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Durham. Uh, one of the responsibilities and privileges that the Mayor has is to recommend to this council uh, the person to be sitting as the Mayor Pro Tem. And upon that, I again recommend to this council that the pro Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor Cora Cole McFadden, continue to serve as the mayor pro tem of this council. I entertain a motion on that matter. So moved. So moved. It's been properly moved and second. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? You close the vote? It passes seven to zero. Thank you, congratulations, Cora. Thank you. So now instead of reconvening at 8.15, we're gonna reconvene at 8.20. Thank you.
that nothing beats what we see here. Like Memphis and Color Purple and Sis. It was there was some great talent, but it's no better than what we had in Bull City. We'd like to reconvene the city council meeting. Ask the clerk if she would call the roll again, please. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Councilmember Brown. Here. Council Member Katati. Here. Council Member Davis. Here. Council Member Moffitt. And Council Member Shule. <laughs> we have a couple of ceremonial items. I'll present one of them and then I'll turn it over to the city manager. So human rights and Bill of Rights Day proclamation presented to El Centro. Oh, you're right in front of me. Paula, I know I saw you. You want, you want you join me and the rest of you, please? Couldn't see for looking. Sorry about that. Uh, this is a proclamation recognizing Human Rights and Bill of Rights Day, whereas the city of Durham is home to a diverse population, including students, working people, and retirees, citizens and non-citizens, all of whom add to Durham's cultural richness and economic vitality, whereas the city of Durham is committed to the human and civil rights of all of its residents, to actions that both protect and preserve those rights, whereas the city of Durham respects and recognizes the civil rights and liberties guaranteed all by the Bill of Rights, where the City of Durham in October 2003 adopted the Bill of Rights Defense Resolution and Resolution Number 9046, supporting the rights of persons regardless of immigration status, where the City of Durham recognizes the importance of maintaining a climate of acceptance and solidarity, thereby decreasing fear and promoting the cooperation of all residents with law enforcement, whereas each year December 10th through 16th is designated Human Rights Week and the Bill of Rights is commemorated on December 15th now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do have our proclaimed December 15, 2013, as Human Rights and Bill of Rights Day in Durham, and hereby urge all citizens to take special note of this observance and to reaffirm our support of the Bill of Rights 
and all of the civil rights and liberties it guarantees to all residents of Durham, pledge to continue our city's policy of non-discrimination on the basis of ethnicity, race, national origin, and immigration status, and pledge that our city's 287G program will continue to focus on felons and to encourage immigrant groups, other governmental agencies, community institutions, and local business leadership to make Durham a welcoming place for new residents from other countries. And with my hand, the Corporate Civil Seat of Durham, North Carolina, this is the second day of December 2013. And I present to Sapala, who is the director of El Centro Hispanics and other set of Whipper for any comments that they may have. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Thank you to all the city uh, council members. Um, and I really congratulate you for recognizing the human rights and also the diversity of the great city of Durham. And um, I love Durham and I'm very happy to be part of this great community. And also I want to thank John Walsh and uh, the Bill of Rights and Immigrant um, Solidarity Committee for all the work they do to really support um, the, all the immigrants here in, in Durham and also to su for supporting El Centro Hispano. So thank you very much and please count on us uh, to work for the great city of Durham. Thank you. I would also, excuse me, I would also like to say thank you to all of you, uh, to Mayor Bell and to the city council for this proclamation. Um, 10 days ago, I was at Stewart Detention Center in Georgia um, as part of the School of the Americas Watch demonstration. And um, I, I, I can't say enough how moving it was to actually go up to the gates of this detention center, which is a for-profit uh, prison run by corporations, Corrections Corporation of America, CCA, one of the two largest for-profit prison chains in the country. Um, there are about 1,900 men at Stewart. Most of them have not committed anything that any of us would recognize as a crime other than to be here to try to do better by themselves and their families. Uh, you all probably know of many stories of some of these men and women who have been apprehended in the dead of night many times and taken to prisons where their families have no idea where they are and have to go through all kinds of hassle to try to locate them. And um, a woman spoke there that day who had walked from Columbus, Georgia to the prison, which is approximately 35 miles uh, because the Greyhound bus stops in Columbus and does not go out into the middle of nowhere in South Georgia where this prison is located. So that's just something I wanted to share with you. Um, and um, I, it, it, it made me feel more than I ever had before the urgency of this issue. So I hope that and I trust that you will work uh, very hard to continue to make Durham a welcome pla welcoming place for immigrants and a place where people who are just here to work hard for their families will not have to fear uh, detention or deportation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Bell, uh, members of the City Council, uh, members of the community. A couple of weeks ago, I had the uh, honor of uh, participating uh, with the, uh, the police department's uh, leadership team at a uh, banquet in uh, Winston-Salem. It was the uh, National Associ uh, the Commission on the Association of Law Enforcement Agency, otherwise known as CALEA's uh, National Awards Banquet. And uh, at that banquet, uh, the City of Durham's Police Department uh, received its reaccreditation. And I say reaccreditation because uh, some may not know, but since 1991, the Durham Police Department has been accredited by this, uh, uh, this uh, Commission on the Accreditation of Law Enforcement Agencies. Uh, it has uh, consistently over the last years received some of the highest recognition uh, that are available uh, as a part of, uh, of that program. Uh, it's my pleasure tonight to ask Chief Lopez and uh, members of his leadership team to uh, come forward, uh, speak just a bit about the, uh, the award, and, uh, and in, in some respects bestow it on us all because it is, a, it is an award that uh, uh, we all uh, appreciate and, uh, and uh, share in the recognition. Chief, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize uh, San Farina. San Farina was working with our accreditation unit with the uh, Durham Police Department. And uh, after we got accredited, I guess another police department stole him because he's that good. So he's not with the Durham Police Department. 
but he supports us in, in, uh, in many ways. And also to Corporal uh, Robert Paffel, who is also working in the accreditation division, because th there's a lot of work that really goes behind the scenes <coughs> in order to, to make it work, and I wanted to recognize them for all the work they, they did. At the same point in time, I need to recognize my executive staff that you see with the white shirts and one suit, who uh, through their leadership has uh, brought this organization not only to the level of being reaccredited after uh, for the 15th consecutive year, but also the uh, the golden uh, the golden standard assessment uh, was given to the Durham Police Department, and that is an, a standard that. Uh, has only fallen to the Durham Police Department in the state of North Carolina for uh, organization of 300 and more. So we're the only ones that carry it. And then also at the same point in time, our forensics unit is also the only one in North Carolina that currently is also accredited. Uh, all of that has to do with the, not just the, uh, the paperwork uh, that's involved, but also the assessment brought on assessors who came in and saw how we did things, uh, how we practiced what we spoke, and uh, we moved on to receive it. And I'd like to really thank the council for your support. Uh, it is with your support that we're able to attain uh, these achievements. We're able to uh, get the, uh, first of all, the funding that we would need in order to carry it out, but also the support in the, uh, in the community to make sure that we can get our things done. And also with the city manager who, as a boss, I can't not say enough uh, because it's his uh, endorsement also for some of the, uh, what might seem to be outside of the box thoughts that we do that uh, really make the, the challenge complete and we're able to get to where we are with this organization. So, and at the same point in time, uh, I cannot uh, do this without the help of the community. And it's the community support that really makes it a lot easier. So, uh, without further ado, thank you very much for the support and thank you staff. And uh, I feel very blessed to have an organization with such talented, and professional police officers, and I think that the community of Durham sees that, because quite clearly, uh, Kalia sees it. So, thank you. Well, thank you, Chief, and certainly on behalf of the City Council, we appreciate the fact that you were able to obtain that reaccreditation and at a, such a high level. It's uh, indicative of the type of work that the department is doing relative to moving forward with accreditation and. We would be congratulated, the whole staff and the whole department. Thank you. Uh, we will continue with the agenda, and I would ask again, are there first comments <coughs> by announcements by members of the council? Recognize the mayor pro tem. Mr. Mayor, I failed to recognize uh, members of the youth commission who were here tonight. Um, and we are very thankful that they decided to come out and support us. And I also failed to recognize our staff during my comments because without them, we could do absolutely nothing. Thank you, staff. Thank you. Let me ask for their other comments. If not, are the priority items first by the city manager? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items this evening. Likewise, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And likewise, city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll move the agenda, first being the consent agenda, consent agenda can be approved with a single motion if a member of council or someone in the public asks an item to be removed. We discuss that later in the agenda. I'll read the head of each one of the consent agenda items. Item one is workforce development board appointment. Item two is Durham Open Space and Trails Commission appointment. Item four is the citywide strategic plan performance audit dated October 2013. Item five is FY 1415 budget development schedule. Item six is the Sixth Amendment to the City of Durham and General Management Solutions, Inc. contract to provide workforce investment, WIA dislocated workers. To all, uh, item seven is Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Grant Project Ordinance and Contract with Alliance Behavioral Health Care. Item eight is Property Tax Interlocal Amendment, Greenwood with Durham County. Item nine is Bid Report, October 2013. Item 10 are bids for four yard waste collection trucks. Item 11 is bids for two automated refuse collection, collection trucks. Item 12 is interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of Durham and the county of Durham for maintenance and repair of fire apparatus. Item 13 is construction contract with Bernie and Bernie Construction Company Inc. for the city hall and annex exterior envelope renovations. 
Item 14 is radio equipment building additional support equipment, FY 2013-2014, CIP budget amendment request for CIP ordinance number 14464. Item 15 is housing, urban development, fair housing, cooperative agreement for fiscal year 1314. Item 17 is license agreement with 21C, Durham LLC. Item 18 is Little Creek Watershed Improvement Plan. Item 19 is amendment number three to water regulatory compliance contract. Item 22 through 23 items that can be found on the general business agenda is public hearings. I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda item. Move the consent agenda. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Uh, we move to general business agenda public hearings. Item 22, amendment to the economic development incentive agreement with UDI Community Development Corporation. I ask the mayor pro tem to handle this matter and I will not vote on this item. I'll open the public hearing on this uh, item and okay. staff, Yes. Do you um, share your comments, please? Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem and, uh, and members of council, my name is Chris Dickey with the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. On June 4th, 2012, City Council approved a neighborhood revisor grant for $100,000 for UDI to renovate a blighted building at 727 North Mangum Street. This location is a gateway corridor heading into downtown Durham. UDI's plan is to renovate a 1,500 square foot building into a 4,500 square foot mixed use commercial residential three level building. The project has experienced a number of delays which has impacted its UDI's ability to meet the deadlines that are stipulated in the contract with the city. In a letter received on October 24, 2013, UDI informed the Office of Economic and Work Workforce Development that it was unable to complete the project within the required contract time due to delays, many of which have been beyond their control. The item before you is staff is recommending that City Council authorize the City Manager to execute an amendment to the agreement between UDI, Community Development Corporation, and City of Durham that would extend the date of the completion of the capital investment to no later than February 4th. 2014 and to extend the contract expiration to June 1st, 2014. Thank you, Chris. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Dickey regarding this um, item from my colleagues? Are there persons in the audience who would like to speak on this? If not, I will declare the public hearing closed and the matter is back before the council. Yeah. Please second, Madam Clerk, would you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero with Mayor Bell abstaining. I can remove item 23, public service company of North Carolina PSNC gas franchise. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, the item that's in front of you is an, ex a, a, an extension of uh, the, the franchise agreement that was first entered into uh, back in 1981 between the city and public service uh, company of North Carolina. Uh, this is actually a new term that, that takes m many of the, the basic tenets of the previous franchise agreement, um, modernizes it, if you will, based on uh, recent changes to the statutes, and uh, it continues on with uh, what, what I think has been a, a very good working relationship between the city of Durham and uh, PSNC. Uh, so the, the document that you have in front of you is, uh, is the work between uh, myself and attorneys for PSNC, and, and certainly want to thank Linda Harris, who is um, uh, here tonight, I believe, to speak on the item uh, for her assistance in getting this together. Um, and um, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Let me ask first of the questions of our members of the council. I want to recognize Ms. Linda Harris if there are any questions. Ms. Harris, if you have comments. Thank you. Linda Harris, PSNC Energy External Relations Manager out of Raleigh. I just wanted to come before you, Mayor, and the council and just say thank you. What a, uh, what a time we've had in the last past 12 months, I think we've been working together on this. It has not been arguments, fusses, or anything like that. It was looking at an agreement that would work for the city and work for the gas company working together to make the best agreement we could have. And that has been a pleasure. It really has been. What we found out during this time is, you know, we, we wanted to understand what each wanted, and that was what we worked toward. And the other thing that we learned from all of this was that we want the best for Durham. Uh, we've had quite a few in system enhancements projects, and uh, you've had projects, and we've learned from this that we need to work better together over the next five years. We have a five-year plan. You need to know what we're doing, and we need to know what you're doing so we can work together maybe at some of the same times and all. 
So we want to thank you for us getting to this point. It really has been a pleasure working with the city uh, attorney and some of your staff. They have had a lot of input, and so has ours. And it's just it's been a wonderful pr pr privilege for us to do that. Thank you. And let me again ask other comments, questions. Uh, is anyone in the public would like to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak on the item. I will declare the public closed. The matter is back before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 7 0. Uh, before we adjourn, uh, Councilman Moffitt, all, all of you received the committee assignments piece. I didn't get any feedback, so I assume that's acceptable. But Councilman Moffitt, who serves as the liaison to the Human Relations Commission, uh, suggested that you might want to have an alternate. I don't know if you want to speak to it, Don. Um, I, I, it was just my thinking that um, if we had a second city council member involved in the Human Relations Commission um, and deliberations right now, it might be helpful to us as we move forward. I told Don I'd bring before the council if there were any volunteers before I appointed someone. If anybody wants to volunteer. When do they meet? considering an alternate one who shows when the regular member cannot, or you want an, addi an additional person at the table. Council um, deliberations when we take up some of the issues that might come to us from the Human Relations Commission. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I know that my, my plate is pretty full, but I've had an interest in human relations over the years. And Are you volunteer? I'll be glad to do what I can. Great. Great. So we accept, uh, Madam Clerk. Except one exception. Tomorrow night is out. You're on an alternate, right? Don, let me ask you this, just for information. As a liaison, do you participate in the discussions, or you, what, how, how, do, how does that work? You know, I'm, I'm still a little um, unclear exactly on the role of the liaison, but um, what I try to do is to uh, provide advice uh, to the chair on, from time to time and, uh, and sit back and not participate in the discussion except when I feel like there's something that's being missed, and then I'll try to add a, 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 an additional perspective to that. But I don't... Uh, participate in a vote. Well, I, I know you wouldn't vote, but I just wonder how, what level you participate. For me, the liaison is to uh, attend those meetings, and if they ask questions or you can provide, provide something, more importantly, to be able to come back to the council and tell us what what's, what's going on. So, okay, if that's the case, we we accept that. And any other items come before the council? If not, the meetings adjourn at 8:40 p.m. Thank all of you.